So Tony, here we are in your beautiful London home, um, surrounded by this wonderful collection um, that you've amassed. All these fascinating figural scenes on Kangxi porcelain, they show us that we can appreciate them, not just for the technical achievements in terms of ceramic development, but also for the interesting legends and stories that they record. And these legends and stories are absolutely central to Chinese history and culture. What particularly interested me was the, the narrative scenes um, from that period of the 17th century. And that's what's really attracted to me um, to collecting this field. You'll see that many of the pieces are of a narrative theme and it was interesting to try and go away and try and establish these scenes and the, the reasons for painting these scenes because of the change in the, um, the situation within China at that particular time. So that's what it really attracted me to. First of all, we have this really beautiful lantern decorated in famu vert enamels. So it's very delicately potted with very thin walls so that the light can shine through from within. So we have here a very important historical scene. We see two men on horseback. Now, one of the men here is surrounded by four attendants. He's actually Xiao He, and he is the chancellor of Liu Bang, who later becomes the emperor of the newly founded Han dynasty. So he's chasing Han Xin, who is a low-ranking military officer whose talents were never recognized by Liu Bang's army. So he decides to leave the army in disappointment. However, the Chancellor Xiao He, he deeply believes that Han Xin is a man of many talents. So he's chasing after him here, trying to persuade him to return. And Tony, how, so how long have you been collecting uh, Chinese porcelain? Well, um, I started collecting about 30 years ago. I started collecting for really a decorative reason. So what I collected was kind of Mandarin palette, Chinlun, uh, uh, that kind of thing. It's only um, probably within the last 20, 25 years that I've really focused on um, collecting a specific period, the 17th century. Um, the collection as it stands now, um, not everything is from when I started out. Now here's another piece showing a very fascinating story. We can see a bearded man fishing by a river and he's being approached by a group of very formal looking men. Now this fisherman is actually Jiang Taigong, a military strategist who wanted to assist the benevolent King Wen of Zhou. But in order to do this, he first needed to meet the king and gain his trust. So he decides to do something quite peculiar. So he's fishing here, but if you look very closely, you'll see that the fish hook is actually straight and the fish hook actually hovers above the water. Now what this means is that the fish can actually never get caught on this hook, which shows that the real intention of him fishing was not to catch fish, but really just to catch the attention of the king who would be passing by. He succeeds in this and the king engages in conversation with him and then he realizes that Jiang Taigong is a man who is very wise, who would assist him in overthrowing the corrupt Shang dynasty and that is what they did in the end. And you know, when you made that sort of transition from those sort of early decorative pieces to the, the Kangxi period, um, have you got a, a, an early example from memory that you, you bought? Yes, so there's a piece here which is a, a brush pot which I bought um, right at the beginning of that period. And, and what attracted me to it was the, the, the spacing on it, um, the way that the um, Kangxi painters did at the time. And also the, um, the kind of the intriguing bit about the, the ferryman coming out of the coming out of his boat and looking at the scene as to uh, put my interest as well. We also have many Kangxi porcelain depicting exciting battle scenes like the one we can see on this large dish. 
Over here, we see two fierce warriors wearing military armor attacking each other. So they are on horseback holding long spears. There are also soldiers holding large banners nearby. And above here, we see an important looking military general observing the scene below. Now, these individuals are probably also based on actual historical figures. And it is possible that the scene shows the Battle of Mei Liang Chuan, a very important episode in early Tang history when the Tang general Qin Chong engaged in battle with enemy forces led by Yu Chi Jing De. Now, Yu Chi Jing De eventually surrendered to the Great Tang after being defeated in this battle. And he actually became a loyal general of the Tang Emperor. So what we're seeing here is essentially the two top military generals of the time engaged in battle. So this is a very thrilling scene that is very well captured by the painter. And over here we have a blue and white sensor which is very delicately potted with three small feet on the bottom. And over here we see a very busy scene of immortals all gathered together. And we also see very auspicious creatures. So we have a pair of phoenixes symbolizing prosperity. We have a deer here symbolizing longevity. And we have a wonderful dragon which appears to be magically conjured up from this Taoist priest's mouth running alongside here. And the dragon, of course, is a symbol of wisdom, power and benevolence in China. So last but not least, we have this beautiful blue and white gu-shaped vase. Now, this is a very classic shape the gu shape is based on an ancient bronze wine vessel shape. So it's characterized by this protruding midsection with a flaring top and a flaring bottom here as well. So we have here a very busy scene of lots of figures. So these scenes are based on a famous poem by the Tang poet Du Fu, which describes the eight immortals of the wine cup. And these refer to a group of eight individuals from that period who are known for their love of wine drinking. So for example, we see over here, we have a prime minister, Li Shizhi. He's over here holding up a cup of wine while his attendants are all frantically preparing his next cup of wine for him. And over here we have Su Jin, who is a devout Buddhist. He's a vegetarian, a strict vegetarian, but unfortunately he still can't resist the temptation of wine. So even though we can see him here kneeling in front of a statue of a Buddha, if you look closely, you can still see his cup of wine nearby. And down here we have the statesman, poet, and calligrapher He Zhizhang. And he famously tried to ride a horse when he was drunk, but as we can see here, he's really struggling a lot here and he has to be held up by his two friends on the side. In front of the horse, we can see a well here. According to Du Fu's poem, He Zhizhang was once so drunk that he fell into the well and was found asleep in there. And have you always been interested in Chinese culture? What happened was I started collecting, collecting, and the, the interest in the culture just drew me into it as I became more involved, more and more involved in collecting and, um, uh, and my reasons for collecting. And of the pieces that you're now selling, um, is there one piece there that's going to be hard to let go? I have this notion of calling pieces TV pieces, which, um, because my exhibition um, room is, um, or display room, should I say, is very close to the TV room. I kind of wander in there sometimes with a small piece and play with it while I'm watching the TV. So that, you know, the, 
very tactile and, and very nice to distract you what from the TV. So there is that one piece which is a fan of the horse which came from the Hodroff collection of which I know that you usually find them with an equestrian as well but this is just a single horse. I know that there's one other in the um, Fitzwilliam uh, Museum in Cambridge. It is a real honour. We're halfway through it, um, roughly speaking, yes. and uh, lots of exciting things coming up, including, uh, you know, our exhibition in, in in Hong Kong, and then of course Asia Week in in London. So um, no, I, it, it's it's you know it's been an exciting journey this far, and as I say, we're only halfway through it. Yeah, so. I'm excited about it as well, and, and thank you as well for your attention. The, the best bits yet to come. Yes, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs>